And how the real reversal changes our democracy is named our show today on Take Two, American Issues Take Two. Um, but it goes beyond that. I'll explain in a minute. But we have our esteemed special guest, Jeff Portnoy. Uh, welcome to the show, Jeff. Thank you. We have um, my co-host, Tim Apicella. Uh, hi, Tim. Good morning. And Stephanie Stoll Dalton, our regular contributor here on um, American Issues Take Two. Thank you for joining us. Uh -huh. so, so we started out with the notion that we we're going to look at Roe v. Wade, the reversal, and how it affected you know, this country socially, economically, and legally, and how it will affect the country going forward. You know, but since um, you know, we looked at that, um, you know, there have been more developments. And if you were wondering whether the Supreme Court and uh, Clarence Thomas, uh, Thomas was interested in doing more uh, along his very conservative lines, um, the answer is being revealed. Um, and now we find, even in the last couple of days, we find other cases that they've decided and are taking to decide that are, you know, very scary. Maybe not as scary as Roe v. Wade, but in some ways more scary. So let's let's look at the scariness, okay? Uh, Tim, how scared are you about um, not only Roe v. Wade and the reversal, um, but what else that reveals to us about the intentions of this very special Supreme Court? Uh, I am worried. Uh, and as of today, I mean, so the, another recent decision with um, the Supreme Court regarding the um, limitation of the EPA and other agencies, other federal agencies. And what I'm starting to, to get a hint at is, you know, almost this preordained political path that certain justices are starting to follow. And I don't know if it's, you know, they're relying on their, their conservative Catholic background and, and that's starting to win the day in their decisions. It seems that way, it's starting to look that way, uh, particularly when um, Clarence Thomas says he's going to address contraceptive uh, pills and, and, and gay marriage, and gay relationships. Uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't envision that our Supreme Court justices would start using religion as a basis of their decision making. And it's starting to look that way. So uh, to answer your question briefly, yes, I'm very worried. Yeah. Well, um, you know, Jeff, what, you know, what has happened to embolden them this way? They really seem to be on an increasing tear. Am I right? Well, I don't think it should come as any surprise. I mean, uh, what they've done in the last couple of weeks was clearly predictable uh, a year ago when these appointments were made. Amy Barrett was just the last guarantee that all of these things were going to happen and will continue to happen. I know some people won't be happy to me. I, I think the country is too preoccupied with Roe versus Wade. I think it's a very important issue, abortion, but in the scheme of our government and our future, it is uh, not outweighed maybe, but equal to everything else that's going on in our country, whether it's the separation of church and state or the lack thereof, the taking away the powers of administrative agencies, putting elections in the hands of state legislatures. Uh, we can go on and on and on. And uh, frankly, those of us who were younger in the Earl Warren days and through the 60s and 70s just better get used to it because this country is in a 180 degree reversal on political, social, and moral issues. And you, Stephanie, how concerned are you? Well, I, I am concerned, but I am I'm also. I have some confidence that this can't hold as all of our unless, the, unless a bomb hits the court. What is I, your option? I mean, well, OK, well, hey, hey, we're down one Catholic, OK, because the justice can, Manji just came on. OK, so we've got more Southern. Men. But the thing is that um, we're uh, this is appallingly um, uh, offensive. Uh, and against our principles that uh, are, are written down and are embedded in all of our documentation that's the foundation for the way we govern. So um, I, I'm very concerned and disturbed. And uh, obviously other people are too, because you know the vast uh, men uh, by the tens of thousands are running for vasectomies. I mean, there are things that are happening, real on the ground stuff. In, in response to this, to try and you know keep their life together in some normal way as they've had it before. But uh, yeah, hopefully um, that the hearings um, 
are also leaking out and that it looks like we're getting some changes in the numbers that show that people may be thinking about things again and uh, perhaps the vote will be the trip. Yeah, leaking out is a dispositive term, Tim. Um, you know, there are rumors to the effect that Clarence himself uh, leaked the uh, Samuel Alito draft opinion. Uh, in order to set up a sequence, and these guys, uh, you know, arguably are, are are playing with the public to try to achieve a certain sequence um, of of issues and cases. Um, and you know, I wanted to ask you: Isn't it doesn't it seem interesting that you have one case after the other, all within a short period of time? It's like you can't you can't tell which case you should be more outraged. Uh, you know, like Jeff said. It is, the outrage is flooding us right now uh, and in a very rapid sequence. Do you think the court thinks about the way they are affecting public opinion um, and, and the likes of the, the Democratic contingent? Well, I, I think Alito basically stated, you know, I, you know, the public be damned. I don't, I don't care uh, it, it, when it came to his, uh, you know, his Roe v. Wade uh, comments. And I, I don't think, you know, they're in for life. And I, I don't think they care about polling. I think he refer, referenced to polling and, and it was inconsequential to what the polling numbers were. Well, fine, but uh, you still have a duty to your, you know, your oath and, and the mission of the Supreme Court is not to follow your personal religious um, convictions, but to look at the constitution as a whole. And I guess, you know, humans will be humans. Um, and I, maybe that's what's taking place, but I do know one thing. Bad, th bad things come in threes. And uh, we're going to have three really bad decisions. And two more yet, to, well, one more yet to come. Because the ruling against the EPA's uh, ability to limit greenhouse gases and, and the impact on federal agencies, uh, that's number two. And so more to come. Well, aside from, you know, the, the, the general reaction of the country, of right-thinking people in the country, um, to, you know, the bizarre things the Supreme Court has been doing, it, including the recusal issue for Clarence Thomas. Um, let's, let's break it down. Let's go around the table with us guys uh, and girls and, and break it down. Let, let's talk about the Sullivan Law in New York, which was the first of the current trilogy, if you will. Um, you know, what, what effect does that have on New York? New York has had the Sullivan Law for a hundred and some odd years. Uh, New York does have a problem with guns. Uh, arguably, the Sullivan Law has helped in dealing with that. Um, what happens if you take away the Sullivan Law? What do you mean? People will carry guns. It's pretty simple. <laughs> I mean, it's not, you know, none of this is complicated. It, it's all very, very clear. If you think well, carry things, more guns, wait, wait, wait. If you think things are bad now, wait till November. Because the way things look, the Republicans will take over the House easily and very likely will take over the Senate. So enjoy the last four months of potential freedom. It's terrible, but it's true. <laughs> it's, I, I, mean, I can't stand it. <laughs> Cheer up. Things could be worse. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's well, the wrong thing. It, it's not they can be. They will be. It'll yeah. just be just like having those uh, assassins riding around in the car. Remember when we had, what did we call them? The, the, two, peop the two guys that were in the car just shooting at everybody. What did we call them? They were terrorists, um, and we uh, that you didn't know where you were going to get shot in your head in the Costco parking lot or filling your car with gas at the Shell station. But you know, not not not, not to get too technical, the decisions are really bad. But when you look at what they've done to precedent and stare decisis, that's what's mm -hmm. really scary. Yeah. You yeah, have a majority of the court that says we don't care what prior Supreme Courts did; they were idiots. Mm -hmm. They made up rights that don't exist. It's time to turn the country back to where it should have been before these morons sat on the court. I mean, that's essentially it. So you know, we don't care. We don't care what the court has ruled 40 years ago or 30 years ago or even three years ago. This is the way we're going to put things now. And now we're going to make it right. I mean, I know, know I'm being very crass about it, but that's it. Read Alito's opinion. You know, Jeff, I think you're spot on because for many decades, conservatives said, oh, the Warren era was a nightmare on America. And they 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 ruled from their personal agenda versus the Constitution. So I think this is a, a holdover or a hangover. It would be a better term, a hangover from uh, their 
their animosity about the Warren era of the court. Well, you know, the uh, the Roe v. Wade reversal was really a cold bath. I mean, both in the in the leaked opinion and in the final. Um, but, you know, it seems to me that the voting issue um, you know, is going to be far worse in terms of its effect on the country. Um, Tim, you want to talk about that? Uh, take the question in a little bit different way, so I'm trying to get my arms around it. If they put the, the, um, the right to control voting in the hands of the states, What's the effect on the country? Well, not no, not the states. As I told you guys, they've taken a case in which they could rule, and it's likely they will, or they wouldn't have taken it, that voting will be in the control of state legislatures, right. taking it away from the courts. That's the big deal. In if other they words, rule like that. In other words, Jeff, if there's the, the legislature that finalizes the state. Right. And courts yeah. cannot overrule what the legislature yeah, does I mean, that, if, that they is, rule, if they rule the way it's predicted because they've taken this case. You know, that is the removal of the check and balance system of government. Yeah. Well, there isn't yeah. any. <laughs> well, it's time. Hello. Hey, I hey, thought hey, there was look, supposed to be. <laughs> it's time to repack. It's the Democrats' well, turn that's, to yeah. pack the court, okay? And that's come up. I've seen that brought up on the news, and, and Biden's got to respond to that. And, and how is how is that going to happen when you need sixty votes? Because he's going to take down the um, that that problem. Well, I'm having this problem with my English. Language. What the filibuster? How's the he gonna, filibuster? How is he going to take down the filibuster? Well, it's going to have to make an exception. We do this carve out, is what oh. they're saying. Yeah, we do well. this carve out. Carve out for um, well, for, I think you uh, got to talk to Joe Manchin before yeah, the carve out is yeah. even suggested. We well, already know where gonna, Joe Manchin's going to go on this, so of course I mean, we I do. Agree. <laughs> we're, we're not going to we're not going to be able to carve it out. We're not going to be able to stop the uh, filibuster, and um, we're not going to be able to uh, um, change what make it many a know, legislative change to the court. We're well, sitting. Where, where's go ahead? I'm sorry, Steph. I'm sorry, I was just going to finish that off with we do have the two senators, the Maine and Alaska senators, who might help us with the Joe Manchin. But Joe yeah, well, Manchin is coming on stronger, too, especially about the filibuster. Maybe, given. maybe some of the Democratic senators or, uh, frankly, what I meant to say is maybe some of the Republican senators who have now begun to indicate that they were lied to during the judicial nomination hearings will open their eyes to what's been going on in this country since Trump got elected. And oh. it, it's clear that these applicants, Kavanaugh, et cetera, just blatantly lied during their confirmation hearings. I, I mean, it comes out in Roe versus Wade, but you know, maybe, uh, maybe Lisa Mikowski's learned the lesson. You yeah, know, I, Jeff, I got I to gotta jump on that comment because I really think it's like catching the kid with his hand in the cookie jar. I think Susan Collins and, and Joe Manchin knew fully what was going to happen with their nominee. They weren't lied to. They, they were complicit. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but I want, to get, I want to get a handle on the shape of the country to come. And we've had a lot of press. <laughs> we've had a lot of press on, on Roe v. Wade and the reversal from the social, from the economic, from the political point of view. The country is profoundly changed and will continue to be profoundly changed. And, in ways that reach every citizen, everybody in the country. We're going to have um, two countries, Jay. We have two countries. We're going to continue to have two countries, and it's going to depend on where you live. That's the bottom line. We live, you? two of us, three of us live in Hawaii, and very little of what's happening is going to have impact on us living in Hawaii. And are, it's going to have are little. Are you suggesting that people are going to move from one yes, state to another? Yes, absolutely. Depending upon their politics, they, move, they may move in both directions. I mean, you go west of the Alleghenies and, you know, east of the Rockies, you've got a different country than the two coasts. It's absolutely clear. And state legislatures in Hawaii and places like that will preserve the right of abortion and will preserve separation of church and state and gun laws to the extent they can without the federal Supreme Court trying to take over. Well, wait, wait, but the, the Supreme Court may very well outlaw abortion in all states uh, and, and, you know, uh, override uh, state uh, initiatives. Well, um, we have that, a state. Uh, that'll be an interesting thing for Hawaii, where we have a state constitutional privacy protection. 
well, which we is not in the federal constitution. But anyway, you're right. Could get worse. But what, but what about if they win, Republicans win the vote, then um, then that's the first thing um, that, 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 that will happen is that filibuster's going away and they're, and McConnell, and they're going to get a nationwide ban on, on about abortion. So what will Hawaii do with that law coming out of the Congress? Because the Congress can make something stronger than the Supreme Court. You know Court. what? I'm one of the people, and I'm not an expert, but I think I have an opinion that has some validity. I don't think you can make a federal law banning abortion. Just like I can understand the argument that you couldn't make a federal law, uh, that you couldn't find abortion as a right in the Constitution. I mean, you know, that's a legitimate argument. I don't agree with it. I, well, I don't no, agree with it. I, 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 I'm with you completely. I agree. But you're not on the Supreme Court just yet. And the Supreme Court. Well, is it's coming. It's one. coming. <laughs> it's coming. Haven't you heard? <laughs> well, I mean, this is the revamping of the 14th Amendment. So well, all, of these, right. all of these civil rights. OK, so it's going to be how they go about dismantling that. Will Thomas and Alito take the lead again and draw on the witch hunters of the 17th century in Britain to help boost their argument or whatever they can do? And I don't know how they can get away with that. At some point, that's got to be disputed. And also, at, at some point, why can't these people, these Supreme Court justices who lied at the at their hearings can't we move against them or is, can't the is that a justice department uh, oh then, no let's let's no, take no. that for a moment it would have to be impeached wouldn't it uh, well, we impeach okay and we, and, and we have to get that through congress don't yes don't we? just just like <laughs> a presidential well, that's the main, okay, we haven't the been main, good at impeachment if, you know? if, 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 two if, senators could help us there okay if, that have you know they besmirch if, themselves. If the Brothers Grimm were still alive, <laughs> maybe they could write a story about a teacher. <laughs> well, hey, yeah, I want to. I want to go to something that Jeff said. You know about the. You know we're going to have two nations here, and I wish it was as simple. I mean, if that's true, and I, I think Jeff's right, we're moving in that direction. I think we're already in a cold civil war. But if if that's true, then I wish it would be as simplistic as blue states versus red states. But it's not. I think it's urban centers versus rural America. Good and that, that really complicates the division of, uh, amongst Americans. You know, I don't want to overstate it, but we're very close to pre-Civil War. Yeah, I think, oh, Jeff, you're dead on. The country was divided in half on slavery, mm -hmm. a single issue. Mm -hmm. Now the country is divided on multiple issues equal to the division during slavery. But you're right. It's urban versus rural. Well, doesn't, doesn't that suggest that if moving to another state may not solve the problem? Um, that, you know, uh, if, if it's happening in your city, there, there are no geographical, no significant geographical divisions. And therefore, what happens? Violence, don't you think? Yeah, well, I'm looking at Austin and Texas. I mean, they're, they're a bastion unto themselves. They're surrounded. Yeah. They're, they're going to build a moat. That's what they need to do. <laughs> the moat comes back. Yeah. <laughs> well, when is it that they're going to get tired of this, these prescriptions uh, on their lives? OK, so the, the Massachusetts Bay Colony was not a real fun place to live. OK, so all of this, uh, you know, all this abortion problem is coming back on them as much as it is on everybody else. And the predominance of the, the church uh, precepts to come down upon all of us. Will that not? So do do all of those people on the Republican side really want to live under that? I mean, well, are they looking for a win? And, you, or, or, I've, I said this, I, I've said this before on multiple of these shows, folks, but you got to blame the voters. Yeah. We're focused on the Supreme Court. It's the voters who have put in the legislators in these 26, 27 states that have passed these anti-abortion bills. It's not the Supreme Court. It's the voters. Well, well let me that's add that, a point, wait, wait, though, but, Jeff. But, but my point is that's why there's two countries. There are voters in more than two thirds of the country who put people in power that have voted for the lack of separation of church and state, who have voted for no abortion, who have voted to overturn the election. Et cetera, et cetera. It's you and me. It's That's not you and me in Hawaii, but it's you and me in Idaho. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Tim is probably going to tell you that a lot, a lot of that has to do with Mr. Trump. Well, well yes, of course. He, he was the band leader. But guess yeah. what? The, the music continues, and it's I mean, all off key. 
Meredith so, Wilson, Meredith Wilson could rewrite the music, man. I mean, you know, that's what happened. Yeah, well, I you know, saw that last week in New York. But let me, <laughs> okay, hang on. I want to catch a point here. And that is, you know, Joe Biden got kind of clobbered uh, with criticism about his kind of tepid response to the reversal of Roe v. Wade. Mm. Well, today he's going exactly to Jeff's point. You better get out there and vote because that's the only real solution to this issue. He goes, I, I'm just the executive power here. I, I can't do anything on executive orders. You've got to change it at the ballot this March, I mean, this November. And I don't know if that message is going to translate. He's not the best communicator in the world, and he's certainly not the most inspirational, but uh, that is the solution. Yeah, well, that's the solution. Is that, is that going to work, Stephanie? Is he going to get people to vote? Is he going to get people to reverse Roe v. Wade? Well, this goes back to your very first question about how we're feeling about what's coming on. And I, I yes, I'm concerned, but I'm also hopeful because he's fading. He's fading fast. Well, I think it's an important question we should discuss. You know, where is this going? If you asked me, you know, a few weeks ago after that leaked opinion where the Supreme Court was going, I said, OK, it's very likely that it's going to reverse Roe v. Wade. OK, what I didn't anticipate is the sequence. Um, of the Sullivan Law, the, the EPA case now coming on, the voting case. I mean, what we have is a pattern, man. And, and the pattern, she seems to be getting worse, the pattern. Um, so, I mean, is there a possibility that the country will recognize the errors of its ways? Is there a possibility that, that Clarence Thomas will wake up one morning and say, gee, I've been wrong. And the rest of them, I've been wrong. They'll change their minds. Or Not are we going to go further? Them further into a hole on this. Um, Jeff, do you think there's, there's hope for Mudville? No. I mean, you know, it's a simple answer. The court is what it is, and they're young. You and I will be buried and long gone before there's a chance that all these things will change. It'll be 20 years from now, maybe when the Democrats, I don't know if it'll ever happen, can reposition the court and take back a majority so that they can fill the court with new justices. This is the Federalist Society. They've been working on it for 25 years. And let's face it, they have totally succeeded. We have all been beaten, frankly, the Democratic Party, the liberals, all these liberal PACs, everybody else, they have been destroyed. And they are going to have to figure out, and I don't know how, in the near future to change what is now a very conservative court that has been licking itself, hoping that it can overturn everything that's occurred in the last 30 years. That's my view. I know it's pessimistic. Somebody tell me where I'm wrong. <laughs> no, you're not wrong, but I you're think not. we should examine, we should examine the, the three areas of effect, okay? Uh, the first one is uh, socially, Tim. How is, how is the country going to change if what Jeff um, you know, expects will happen happens? Social. Um, it might be through demographics. And to his point about uh, certain people will be long buried, uh, that's a demographic issue. Uh, you may have Gen X, you may have the millennials and Gen Z um, bring their social agenda to the voting booth. I don't know, but that's, that's 20 years. Jeff's right. That's, that's a long way down the road. Uh, what you've had, though, as a president, Trump specifically, who is able to use social wedge issues, specifically white fear and white replacement, as a catalyst to get these things in these things in motion, and people aren't voting on platforms and issues and uh, where the party is. Uh, they're voting on their fear, and Donald Trump instilled fear like no politician has done since Huey Long, and uh, quite good at it. Can't I we do something we can about make the argument that uh, socially uh, we're going to wind up in violence because nobody will agree and it'll be it'll affect everyone and we'll all be on different. Well, there's sides. 400 million guns out there. It's going to happen one way or another. Yes. Well, but before that, before that, why can't this president take some strong steps? I'm frankly disappointed in Obama never figured out a way to trump McConnell on on the Amy Con on the last. Supreme Court justice that they had to take in. So can Biden show us um, a, a first step that'll knock down that do, those dominoes what, what, that are what, all lined what, up? What, what can he possibly do well, to okay, change the rules? Wait, wait. I, I, I hear you. What can he, 
possibly do to change the rules of the Senate? Let's start with that. All right, what can he Foster, do? I, I How? Know, uh, he what would LBJ do? LBJ didn't have a whole bunch of people running over saying, yeah, get on with that civil rights stuff. You know, he called him up and he he did his duty. He brought them on. LBJ so what, was a was a was a caterpillar tractor. Biden is a trowel, a garden trowel. Well, he's got to change. He's got to get in there and make, quote, some deal. Well, maybe it and goes I mean, back to the, the judge, uh, the candidate you mentioned, Merrick Garland. So, Jeff, let me ask you, can't Merrick Garland do something about some of this? I mean, we, we haven't heard much from him. I think he'll agree. Um, but query, uh, if he were, if, if you were running the Department of Justice, could you do anything about this? About what? What? What this, though? I hear you, Jay, but what this? Can't change the court. Uh, what this? You mean indict Trump? I, I, I don't know. I mean, that's the only well, issue. I mean, that's, one of the that's, the only issue. that's the only issue that's out there now. And yeah. voting and voting. Yeah. Those yeah. are the two Justice Department issues, right? Right. Voting and, rights and indicting Trump. Right. Okay, but the affidavit, the uh, filibuster is out there for the president to do something about, and I'm sure there's some other things uh, he could do. I, I, his, uh, let, me, let me go back. <clears throat> yeah, I, I got to talk to you about one thing you mentioned about Merrick Garland, and it's obvious to me what's happened. You know, in corporate America, uh, CEOs tend to pick people. And this is true for a lot of organizations. You tend you tend to choose personalities that are like your own. And in the case of Biden picking Merrick Garland, milk toast selects milk toast. And I'm just saying he picked someone who is weak and ineffective, and that's what Merrick Garland is. That's why Merrick Garland was chosen by Obama to be um, acceptable to the GOP because he wasn't aggressive. Because he was, I hate to say it, milk toast. Yeah. Well, who has the power now? Who do we have in place in a position, at, in the executive position? Who has the most power? <laughs> it's Biden. Wait. People, come on. It's the president. Okay, let, let, me go, let me go to a, a sort of a final round here and ask you, um, if these, these draconian things are happening, um, and if they come to a conclusion the, the way, um, you know, the, the conservatives want them, uh, to go, what kind of a country are we going to have? So let me ask Jeff first. Legally speaking, um, seems to me that our our civil rights are in great jeopardy. We're going to have a country. We're going to have a country, and we do have a country, and we're going to have more of this controlled by white male Protestant slash Catholics who live outside of cities. That's America for the foreseeable future. Okay, wait, wait. Well, what about the law? Uh, of, what about uh, it? <laughs> of, uh, the law of civil rights, the law of, of, of preventing corruption, um, the law of, uh, you know, equal fair treatment, all that. Um, that was nice. That... that was nice when it existed. I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I say go to the Depression in 19, you know, 29 to 32 in Chicago. That kind of justice. <laughs> Yeah, that's well, that's a fair chance. Get your okay, pitchforks. I, get your pitchforks ready. One um, more, one more effect now. And I'm zooming back a little. Um, <laughs> take all this, all this that's happening. What about our economy? You know, we have issues about inflation. We have issues about, you know, prices uh, that, that have increased because of the uh, Putin war in Ukraine. But what about our economy in general? Um, I suppose there's other questions too, but that seems to be right at the front end. So, Stephanie, what about our economy if these things happen? Well, the president doesn't control the economy, and neither does the Congress. So that's got to be that's going to play. It's it's a, it, that's a global issue. There are many many variables in that. So we're going to come out of it, of course. I mean, the Treasury, the 30-year Treasury is the best thing the world's got yet. So haven't seen anybody come up with something better. So we'll we'll get out of this. I just think that it's a soft time because we're maybe we're making inroads on the Trump control. We got the drip out, the leaking out from the January 6th. We got some stuff to do. We need to change these states and the numbers of senators they have too. And that's another part of the Senate that's a problem. 
is that that's a minority ruling Senate. I mean, 30% of the people of the country are, are being represented by the people that are making the dis can make decisions. You know, I know so, we're running out we're running out of time, but before we got on, you guys were talking about Liz Cheney. Yes. Come the middle of November, Liz Cheney will be doing podcasts. Exactly. Yeah. Because, because she's not going to have anything else to do. So, I mean, what else do you need to know what the Republican Party is? I mean, she's got so a there's ton of money. She's got a ton of money in her. She's got she's two. way behind she's done. already. She's, she's done. done. She's done. We admire she's her. Done. But she's I done. can beat oh. her if I ran in that state. Well, what about if she ran for president, guys? Well, as in what How about that? Okay, which she's party? got the name. Which, which party? The new third party? Which party? She's I not a Democrat. She or is she's... No, she can't be a Democrat. But she I, she could go for the party of Ross Perot. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Democrat would vote. But we're gonna we're gonna go around for uh, last comments now with summarizations. And uh Stephanie, you go first and you see if you can deal with the, the, the questions that Jeff has raised about your optimism. Well, I'm just asking uh, people uh, to do to go to work on this and do do it take what they can manage to the power they can wield and make it happen. There are too many people in the history of our country in these executive positions that have had lots of things they did. Let's do it, Biden, and all the rest of you with that kind of uh, power. The most okay. powerful thing in the world. Make okay. For us. All right, Jeff, now, can you tell us how you really feel? <laughs> you know, the only possibility is at the ballot box. And the voters and the public have got to make sure that they have the right to vote. And they vote the way that we've been talking about. But I'm telling you the truth, because I think the truth is in the reality. Voters in two thirds of the states are not voting, Jay, the way the four of us would vote in their jurisdictions. But that's the only way. So people are going to have to go to the ballot box, take over state legislatures, keep taking mayor's races, win the governorships, which they're unable to do. The Republicans are dominating all of government at the moment. And maybe Roe versus Wade, which I think really is not the most important issue in the world, but it may be the most galvanizing issue to help things achieve that we want at the ballot box. Reminds me of that website called runforsomething.org <laughs> and organized by a woman named Littman. Um, but let me ask you, suppose it doesn't work, Jeff. What kind of a country have we got? Uh, we got borders with Canada and Mexico. Pretty easy to move. I mean, we have... <laughs> We, 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 we have... You know, I mean, I, I'm sorry I'm being glib about it. I mean, we have a country that we don't want at Mexico the won't let us in. But, yeah. We have we we'll have a big reverse immigration problem. They'll, they'll be fighting to keep us out. That's where we're going. Right. <laughs> here on Think Tank. Okay, closing for you, Tim. Oh my gosh, how do I even begin? You know, uh, I'll go back to your comment about the economy and its uh, effect. Uh, I'm worried that you know this uh, the economy and particularly inflation and the shrinking uh, power of the dollar for a lot of Americans would be the spark for a desert dry forest of social grievances. And I worry about those social grievances that are, are right under the surface. And Donald Trump has really exploited so well. And if he gets back on the podium and to the public microphone, he'll be right back at it again. And I'm worried this time we'll see some serious eruptions. And to your point, Jay, we'll see some violence in the street. OK, well, thank you all. Uh, Tim Apicella, my co-host, Jeff Fortney, our special guest. Uh, Stephanie Stoll Dalton, our special contributor. And now our show is over, and I am going to go and soak my head. <laughs> <laughs> Aloha, you guys. 